exquisitely embossed and inlaid in gold. And wherever you look, there are the lions which gave the suit its name. A magnificent lion's head with flowing mane decorates the helmet. There are more lions on the gauntlets and at the elbows. Lions everywhere, symbols of kingship and power. The owner of this suit must have been a man of great wealth and status. But amazingly, no records survive to tell us who he was. The French or possibly Italian armorer who made it around 1560 must have been a great craftsman. But he too is a mystery figure. We do know that it was lent to the Royal Armory in 1768. But for its history before that, we can only rely on clues. This portrait of the second Earl of Manchester from around 1640 is one clue. Half hidden under his robes, the breastplate of the lion armor is unmistakable. The Forlorn Hope Medal of 1643 for soldiers who led the first assault of a battle shows King Charles I on one side and his son, the future Charles II, on the other. Both of them wearing the lion armor. Around 1668, it appeared again in the portrait of the first Duke of Albemarle. The details at the elbow show clearly that he too posed in the lion armor. But it was more than just a glamorous studio prop. The lion armor was built to withstand battle. A close inspection of the helmet reveals sword slashes, proving that at some stage in its history, the armor was worn in combat. Was it a duel? or a tournament, or even a battle, we don't know. It is as much a mystery as the man who wore it. And adding to the puzzle is another suit of armor, kept at the Musée de l'Armée in Paris. From the magnificent helmet downwards, this armor too is rich in lion details, on the gauntlets and at the elbows. It is by no means identical to the lion armor, but the lion feel suggests that both suits may have been made as a pair. In its time, it has been worn by kings, by earls, and by dukes. But the magnificent and mysterious lion armor still holds the 400-year-old secret of who it was made for.